Amen. I am so happy to be here this morning with you, worshiping together uh, our God. And I so missed you last Sunday. And uh, indeed, better is one day in his court than the thousands elsewhere. That's so true. Uh, so I am very, very happy to be here with you. And uh, we are going through uh, seasons of uh, thanksgiving, uh, hope, uh, joy, and love, and peace. Uh, we are getting into exciting seasons in our faith journey. And uh, we have a lot of uh, things to be thankful to our God. Especially, I have so many things listed up to be thankful to our God. Uh, one of those things is that not too long ago, we had uh, our dedication for our brand new parking lot, the reconstruction of our parking lot, and we have that. And and it's about to come to be reality. It's almost uh, finished. And uh, during these uh, constructions going on, like, like uh, three, four weeks now, and uh, some, I heard uh, two distinctive comments from everybody. One was what? Complaining about inconvenience, uh, mud all over, and uh, how long would it take, and uh, what things need to be done, what uh, the contractors didn't do this way, didn't do that way. And on the other side of a group of people, they are so excited, and uh, whenever they come in and then they see the work is, has been gone on, and they are just a big smile ear to ear. Now, which group are you really relate to? Hmm? You, huh? I, I don't want to, you know, put you on the spot. Probably, like me, I was on both sides, right? I was excited to have this project. And I was told that it's going to take only two, three weeks. And then when they pour the concrete two or three days later, we can drive in on. And so I assumed that today we are going to celebrate complete parking. And we can drive in the new parking you know, driveway and et cetera. And it didn't happen. So I started monk about it, right? And, and then. Um, they told us now the weather didn't cooperate, and they told us now, told me that, you know, if you want to take a, a most uh, benefit out of a brand new um, parking, uh, you're going to have to let it uh, sit for a while, not drive on, maybe seven days. I said, oh, and then some expert says, oh, well, maybe 28 days. I said, oh, no way. I can wait that long. I mean, you know, but... Think of it, you spend over $100,000, and we've been waiting for this uh, uh, parking lot to be done forever. Why can we not wait a little longer so that we can take the most benefit out of uh, what we were invested on? Um, that's so true. And that thinking gets to me, and I am getting more excited now that we are going to enjoy that parking generation after generation, yeah? And for a long time, we're going to enjoy that. And God reminds me that, don't, can't you not see? Don't you see what I have done? I am doing new things in your midst. Can't you not perceive it? And this is a promise that God has given me. The Isaiah 61, verse 7, if you receive it, it will be yours. Amen? This is uh, what's been going on. And God says this, uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, shame, uh, you will receive what you will receive, double portion, double portion of a blessing. Instead of a disgrace, you will inherit the land, double portion, 
of the land. You will receive everlasting joy because God has promised each one of you. God has promised for this Ohana, we will receive uh, the double portion of his blessing. Hallelujah. This is the, uh, what wake me up. Uh, that this is the spirit of living God and telling me and to share it with you if you believe it and you will receive it. Amen? And this is an exciting moment. And as we celebrate our Thanksgiving and we list up all the thankfulness that we need to do. And this is giving thanks in advance what God will do for us for in our lives. And that God has promised. And as God has promised this sentence to Israelites, and uh, it came to true, right? And uh, as uh, we are studying Nehemiah, book of Nehemiah, we've been going on uh, for 10 weeks now. It's 11, lesson 11 that we are going to uh, study today. And today, and as you know, Nehemiah, they started to rebuild the uh, walls of Jerusalem in spite of in spite of lack of what manpower, right? There was only few people, exiles left in the I I I Jerusalem, and then few exiles returned, and there was no way they can take on this enormous task, but by faith, and they walk by faith, and they did it, and then what? 52 days later, the war was completed. Now we've studied all throughout and what have they done when war was completed? They were, uh, first of all, um, what did they do first? Uh, celebrate. And they had what? The Ezra to read the word of God. And when they, uh, Ezra read the word of God, the hearing word of God, their faith would grow, right? And also they made a commitment, they confessed their sins, and they made a new covenant, and then et cetera, et cetera. Now on, we are 12, less than 12. Now they designated this day to celebrate the rebuilt, the completed walls. They celebrating, they are celebrating uh, uh, this uh, uh, event. Now, as we set aside, celebrate Thanksgiving, we set aside, celebrate the dedication of groundbreaking, we, set, we are going to set aside the day that we can celebrate our brand new uh, parking lot. And this is like, a, the, the Nehemiah is like a, our story. And this is uh, their, uh, one of the greatest uh, moments, one of the historical moments on Israelites' life. And uh, this parking lot is one of the historical moments of uh, Paul Kellyan's life. Can you see that? Do you see it? Yes, it is. And we are uh, getting excited. And I hope all of you are getting excited what it can do for us. And uh, God uh, has a promise for a double portion of a blessing. And it comes with the parking lot. It comes with the parking lot. You, you watch and you see and you pray. And God's going to double the, uh, uh, every, everything and God's going to double us. Amen? And then here in, in, in their celebration, and as they celebrate, what they've done is this. They've recommitted themselves. They made the covenant. They are recommitting themselves to serve God uh, with the integrity. Now, this title of this uh, lesson is uh, service, service and integrity. And if we want to serve God, and we've got to serve him with integrity. Now, in celebration, always, always, there are two criteria, very important criteria. We've got to uh, uh, have it. Now, we sing this morning, celebrate Jesus, celebrate, and the resurrection of our Lord. And somebody says, is it Easter already? Huh? Yes, it is. Anybody agree with me? Huh? Why is it Easter already? Every Sunday is Easter celebration. 
and we are worshiping the Lord God on the day, the commemorate the day he was uh, what? Risen from the dead. Right? And so worship service is not funeral service. Uh, worship service is not about uh, convicting and uh, feeling sorry and uh, go down the grave. It's uh, about resurrection, about what? New life, about new excitement, about what God has done, what God is doing, remembering what God will do, keeping, because we've seen what God has done through Paul Kellyan's life. And God, we know God will do some greater things yet, right? And we are working in this present life and, and giving thanks to what God has done and giving thanks to, to what God will be doing in our lives and God is doing in our lives. That's a whole shebang of the celebration. And this, in dedication service, they are doing the same thing as we are doing, amen? So in this, I will come up with uh, how uh, we are going to uh, recommit ourselves to serve God uh, with integrity. And uh, what they've done in this celebration, we can pick uh, two P's out of it. First of all, two P's out of it. And first of all, it's not going, is it going? First of all, let's look at verse 30. Verse 30 says this, verse 30 says this, when the priest and uh, uh, Levites gathered together, what they've done? They what? purified themselves, and they purified the people, they purified gates, and they purified the what? Walls, right? Why is that? I mean, they, they, uh, the, so many people gathered together, all the Jerusalem was filled with the people, and Levites and the priests and, and the musicians, yeah? That's the setting up for big celebration of a worship service, right? And then what did they do first? They, what? Purified everything, purified themselves. It's symbolically, ceremonially, that means their hearts, they opened their hearts to be cleansed, create in me a clean heart. And this is the most important thing. Every time we worship the Lord God, we have to have a purification. We have to come before the Lord, open our hearts, and get all the cookiness in our hearts to be cleansed and washed away and consecrated. And because God it does not, please or accept our worship when we are not pure in our hearts. Because the blessed are the pure in heart, right? Why? They will see God. That means they will commune with God. As we worship our, uh, our Lord God, and we are supposed to commune with our God's spirit. Our spirit supposedly commune with God's spirit. We are we supposed to hear from God? We supposed to talk to God as we come and worship? It's not one way direction, but both way. Uh, um, two-way communication. That's what needs to be done unless, it will be done unless our heart is hardened and closed or our mind is going off of what my, uh, my turkey is doing in my oven or uh, um, what kind of a dessert do, do I want to play, uh, I mean cook or uh, bring or all kinds of thoughts going on while worshiping the Lord God, while we are celebrating what he has done, what he is doing, what he will do in our lives, then yes, you're wasting your time. That's why and when, when they gathered and they, in their celebration, they purified themselves so that they can serve God with integrity. Now, no matter, listen carefully, no matter how hard you work for the Lord, no matter how big of a donation you make, 
uh, no matter how uh, much sweat you pour out for the Lord, if your heart's not in it, it cannot please God. God will not accept it. You can do it, but it's going to nowhere. That's why they are, what, purifying themselves. They are, let their, themselves open their hearts and minds and get cleansed. Now, somebody will say, well, Jesus died on the cross and he to cancel all our sins and the greatest day in human history has happened already so therefore I don't need to ask for forgiveness anymore. That's true if you haven't fallen short of God's glory ever since you received the joy of thy salvation. How many of you never ever fall short of God's glory? Hmm? How many of you never ever missed the mark of God's standard ever since you received God's grace and you received salvation? Right? I've been stepping on some mud, some manure. I've been walking through the dust and fall down fall flat on my face, and we need to be washed. I need to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I need to be washed by Jesus. Only way I can be washed by Jesus is open my heart and let myself be purified, right? And remember that uh, when Jesus was washing the disciples' feet and, 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 and when he tried to wash uh, Peter's feet, what did Peter do? Oh, no way. You are my master. You shall not wash my feet. And Jesus says, well, if I don't wash your feet, you are no part of me. And he says, oh, then wash me from head to toe, just like Peter. And uh, Jesus says, what? Well, you don't need to be washed from head to toe because you have been bathed already. So you need to be, what? Wash your feet. Yeah? You need to wash your feet. I mean, can you imagine you go to bed, go to bed without washing your feet when you know that your feet has some stink on it? Hmm? And yet, in our soul, when we go to bed, we have a lot of cookie stuff in our hearts. And we go to bed with that, then next morning, what? You get one more wrinkle and you get the stomach ulcer. It's, <laughs> that's why God asks us. The worship is not just one hour worship, right? 24-7, we, the, the number one purpose of our life is what? Enjoy God. How do you enjoy God? With this cookiness in your heart, you cannot see God. You have to be pure in your heart to see God, to commune with God, enjoy God. That's why. 24-7 when we realize. So at least once a day before you go to bed, wash your feet. Wash off your, all your sins, right? Huh? Right? Right. <laughs> and uh, this is Psalm, uh, Psalm uh, 119, verse 37. Pray this prayer. Turn my eyes away from worthless things and preserve my life according to what? Your word. According to your word. And before you go to bed, when you open your Bible, the word of God will direct you. Word of God will convict you because the word of God is written by the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit will convict you. And if your hearts are open, you will accept that conviction. You will obey what the Word of God teaches you. That's how you can live according to the Word of God. And the worthless, turn away, my eyes turn away from worthless things. What are worthless things in the life? There is everything is worthwhile to think about and engage in with things, right? 
And we live life, there is lots of battles we go through. And the, the Bible says, you've got to be selective. You've got to ignore some things. You've got to selective to where you go, who you associate with, and uh, what you eat. We've got to be selective in order for us not focus on the worthless things. You, you know how many hours people argue over something that is not life and death? And they are wasting their time and they, they, they try to make the other person, try to make the other person corrected uh, and, and, and try to prove that they are right. Some betters do not belong to you, belong to me, belong to God. Lots of betters in life belong to God. And we try to please everybody. We try to be approved by everybody. Mm, forget about that. It's not going to happen. 25% of in the whole wide world, four, uh, one out of four people you meet, they will never, listen carefully, they will never approve you. They will never going to like you. 75% of people you can work with, all right? Focus on that. Why do you want to bend over those people who can never, you can never please? Hmm? Don't waste your time. That's what the word of God says. And only one person, one entity that we need to focus on, we need to please, we need to get approved is what? God. God. Yes, you are so great. You know the answer. And even Jesus did not uh, you know, get the most uh, approval, 100% approval for, from the people, right? Jesus did not please everybody. He did not bend over backwards to please those unpleasable. So why, what on earth do we think that we are? That's what the Word of God teaches. That that way you will have a peace of mind. When you go to bed, you reconcile all the days what it happened. And then read the Word of God, meditate, and then pray and purify your heart. That's how you can serve God with integrity. As you serve God, you will encounter many criticism. And some criticism, you take it hard. Some ignore it. As long as you search your heart that pleasing to your God, that you are following the word of God, that's all matters. You are following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And that's how you get to be cleansed every day. You get to be washed every day, every day, every moment. Amen? And if you cannot do every day, at least on Sunday morning, at least on Sunday morning, you've got to get rid of all that stink that you've been piled up as you live life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what is the first P? Purify my heart by the word of God. Amen? Got it? And then second P is this. Look at the verse 34. Verse 34, and uh, there was a great uh, resounding joy and this and that, and women and children enjoy. And then the, uh, at the end of the sentence, what does it say? Their celebration, their joy, sound of their joy was what? Heard from far, far away from Jerusalem. How could that be? I mean, there was no PA system, right? They were on the walls and they were on the mountains and shouting and shouting for the joy what God has done in their lives and what God is doing among them, what God will do. I mean, they were just irradiated with excitement. And this is a power of a witness. How can people hear what we celebrate 
what we do here in this ohana, who lives in a kalui, who lives in a haiku, how can they hear us? Hmm? How can they hear the celebration and the joy and the exuberation that's going on in the city of Jerusalem? It means that everybody who is engaged in that worship, engaged in that, uh, that believing in that what God has done and what God is doing and God will do in their lives, they were filled with joy. It was what? out of their expression, they were beaming on their faces. If when you go out and uh, talk stories in um, Costco or um, Longs or wherever you say, how's things going? Somebody asks, right? All right, something's going, I'm still alive. Or, great, I mean, you got to come see our church, and uh, everything's going on great, and God has done this, God has done that, and I expect God will do this for me. I mean, do you have excitement in your heart? Joy of thy salvation in your heart. And uh, do you, are you happy? Are you happy that you belong to Paul O'Kella? And if you are so happy, that will be the witnessing power. That will be... Okazakis. I'm sorry to point, point you out. Okazakis, when they were in the lawns or whatever in the shopping center or wherever, they like to talk stories, right? So they start talking stories with a Shinsato. Hmm. And then at the end of it, what? They said, simply say, hey, come to our church. And they showed up next day because God has appointed them to be here, of course, and because God used Okazakis to tap on their shoulder. That's what the evangelism is all about. It's nothing about, uh, uh, about to be shamed or nothing about sharing, oh, Bible, the, the, the Psalm 119, 37, and no, it's nothing about that. It's about how happy are you serving God and being in here or worshiping Lord God. That's gonna be what? transfer to wherever you go. That's a witnessing power. That's what this is happening here in Jerusalem. People were so happy and giving thanks to God and praise God's name on high. That is, a, by the way, will of God for us giving thanks all the time. Did you know that? The first Thessalonians 5 um, verses 6 to 7 and everybody knows uh, be joyful always, right? And be, pray continually and in all circumstances give thanks to your God. That's the will of God for you. So don't ever tell me you don't know what the will of God is for you. And that is the one of the passages that tells each one of us, that is the will of God. Now, in all circumstances, not for all circumstances, how can you uh, 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 say, give thanks for car accidents, right? But in that situation, you give thanks. I mean, uh, Helen Kawahara, she called me and she had uh, eye surgeries and this and that, and, and, then, uh, and then she fell again. But she praised God, praised God that only her toe was hurt. She didn't break any of her bones and praising God. And that is the attitude of all the believers when we are excited, filled with the joy of thy salvation, excited, and, 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 and everything we can stop 
giving thanks to God and praise his name, that's when we can serve God with integrity for the rest of our lives. That's when God's going to uh, um, bless us double, bless our socks up. Amen? I mean, our God deserves what? Our praises. Our God deserves our thanksgiving. Don't you think? Hmm? Yeah. 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 Hello. <laughs> Shout it. I mean, this is Thanksgiving Sunday. I mean, we've got to be filled with the joy and filled with the list of the things that we give thanks to our God. Because our God loves to bless us all and loves to bless us so that what? We can be a blessing to others. Our God wants to perform a miracle in our lives. And he constantly pushes us to reach our optimal potential, to reach next level. Some, for some of you, next level can be the complete healing of your illness and a breakthrough of our finances, or a mandate of the relationships. And some of you might think, well, Pastor, you look so excited, but I don't. I kind of, looking at my situation, it's far, far away from what is about to come, what is about to be fulfilled, as you said, because we are hearing, you are hearing Satan's accusation. Satan loves to tell you, you are done. You are finished. You are good for nothing. Amount to be nothing. But if you have joy in your heart, fear with God's anointing, and this is what you're going to say to your enemies. Stop. Glut over me. I, even though I have fallen, what? I will rise. Micah 7, 8. I will rise because I serve the God who will be with me, who will protect me, who will rescue me, who will push me up, who will lead me, who will ever try to bless me, who will ever in my life. Can you do that? Do you? Do you believe your God? You have a confidence in your God that God will, then he deserves praises. He deserves our thanksgiving in advance. You know, when everything is good, it's easy for us to give thanks, right? But in spite of everything going on, you have hope in the future. You know what God has done before. Now, right now, you're not going to, you can't see, but by faith, what's coming in reasonable expectation, what God will do, and you give thanks. Oh, yes, you give thanks. And I am so excited that to see the God's plan fulfilled in this Ohana, God's going to, God's going to believe me, or I believe the word of God, not, not believe me. I believe that God is going to bless each one of you a double. Instead of a disgrace, you will inherit the land, a double portion. Instead of a shame, you will receive that prophecy here, right here. Do you believe it? And you will receive it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Then, yes in our celebration. That's how we can serve God with uh, integrity. In our celebration, what do we do? Praise. Second P is what? Praise God and thanksgiving. Always. Amen? Amen. That's God's will for us. Image of each one of you. Whenever you go through treacherous time in life, faith journey, and you are chased by evil, know that God is with you. And God will rescue you. God will protect you. God will 
lift you up. God has promised Isaiah 41 10, do not be afraid. I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will help you. I will support you. I will uphold you in my righteous right arms. Hallelujah. Our God deserves forever praise and thanksgiving. Our God deserves our pure heart so that we can serve him with the integrity, continually serve him. Amen? Amen. So what we kept, what was the answer for how do we continue to serve him? How do we recommit to serve him with integrity? We've got to purify our hearts and praise and thanksgiving all the time. That's when God will bless ourselves up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray.